Hi guys, I'm Yusuke Nagano from Karate Dojo Waku. If you guys are new to this channel, we upload karate tutorial videos every week. So the topic for this week is how to fight an opponent that's bigger than you, that has a longer reach and a powerful movement. So I'll introduce you three techniques that you can use in karate for fighting a bigger opponent. So the three techniques I'll be introducing are the Chudan Maoshigeri, touching the lower body or kicking and then going for the Jodan. And at last, the Chudan Zuki counter. So if you want to skip to the parts, I've set a time stamp there. So check that from the description. So let's see the bad examples first. <laughs> Alright, let's get started. So right now, our heights are just different and our reach. See, there's a big difference, right? So in this kind of scenario, I'm pretty sure you guys come across sometimes. So three examples that you shouldn't do are first, to go in without doing anything. So if you simply just go in, then he can sense that you're coming. Number two, if you go too close to the opponent, he can attack right away. So, that's not close enough for me, but that's close enough for him. The third bad example is to counter from the top. So let's say he does a Kizamizuki. If I try to counter him from above, he's already shooting from above my, dis my height. So, that's pretty hard for me. So, let's avoid those three examples and please focus on these three points that I'm going to introduce you from now. The first attack that you should do is using kicks. So, right now, where I can punch from is around here. So if I get to this distance, or around here, so I can slightly touch his forearm, I can punch. But if I can punch, he can punch as well. If I want my distance to be farther than his, then using kicks are effective. So as for my chudangiri, I can kick from here. So this is my punching distance, but this is my kicking distance. So let's try to utilize that. However, when you kick, since kicking is a bigger motion than punching, you must be careful to not over-exaggerate your movement. So what I want you to do is kick without stepping the front leg. What I mean by that is, if I step my front leg to kick, it looks like this. See how I have to put my weight on my front leg in order to kick? But try to get rid of that and kick like this. This way, I'm not putting my weight too much on the front leg. So, to practice that, first, if you're a beginner, Kick in two steps. One, two. One, two. But once you get used to this motion, try not to put that much weight on the front leg. This, this motion. So, try to move smoothly and kick. It's like you drop your front leg. Like this. And connect it to a kick. So I recommend you guys to try the Chudan Maoshigeti to his stomach first. But after getting that done, then you can make that more complicated by maybe looking at the Chudan, but aiming for the Jodan Maoshigeti, or have the same form up to this point, and go for the Uramashi. 
or maybe you can move in the same form up to this point and aim for the punch. So the last example of the Chuda Mashigeri, the purpose was to get rid of the distance difference between the bigger opponent and yourself. The example that I'm going to show you here right now is to stop the opponent from moving or reacting. To do that, we have to get him distracted in all directions. Usually when you do karate, you defend your jodan. But that means his attention to the gedang or his leg isn't so much. So the example that I'm going to show you here is to slightly touch his front leg and then to move in. You can do that with your front leg or your back leg. So when you try this for yourself, make sure when you touch their leg, you have your weight on the back leg. Because if this is straight and you're kicking, then you can't move forward after the tap. So make sure when you go in, you have the weight on the back leg and then use the weight on the back leg too. Push yourself forward. Later in the match, without doing this, you can just aim for the chudan. It's the same motion, so aim for the chudan. The last technique you can use for an opponent that's bigger than you is to make him attack and counter. When he moves forward to punch or to kick, the moment he finishes his punch is the moment that he's stopping the most. So the force that's going forward is being absorbed by his hips, knees of joint and the ankle. So aim for the timing of this. So let's say you make him do a kizamizuki and count for the um, for the counter. Or go close to him and make him punch the chudan, sway back, and go for the jodan. Or make him punch the kizami and go for the kick. For an opponent that only attacks once, which means he only punches once and he goes back or he kicks once and he goes back, you can prepare one counter for that. However, if your opponent is the type that does multiple punches, then the counter that I recommend you to do is the chudan. This is really safe because usually the lens goes up or the multiple punches and kicks comes to the head. So avoid this dangerous zone and just duck under him. So that'll be it for the video today. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure if you guys love the video, make sure to hit that like button and please, please subscribe to our channel. The topic for next week will be learning a simple beginner's Japanese word that's used in a karate dojo. So stay tuned for that. Also, if you want to check out more detailed topics, then follow us on Instagram right here. And I'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye.